Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United have declined to meet Erling Haaland's agent Minio Riola to discuss a deal. But we are still very interested in signing him. Minio, uh, Erling Haaland feels feels loved by Barcelona so that's a huge blow for Manchester United now Minio Riola and Erling Haaland's father have flown to England to hold talks with several Premier League clubs Not so long ago, Erling Haaland and his agent held talks with Barcelona and Real Madrid. Solskjaer played down talks of Manchester United chasing Erling Haaland. He said he'll make his own mind up. There was narratives coming out the other week saying that Solskjaer keeps calling Erling Haaland to persuade him to join Manchester United and he revealed how impressed he was with Haaland with his training at Mulder. And he said... Haaland struggled with bad knees at Mulder. Earlier on this season, Oli said he was following Erling Haaland's progress and he's keeping in touch with the player. Borussia Dortmund have revealed their asking price. It's £154 million. Dortmund are going to find it extremely difficult to sell him if they are demanding that much. Erling Haaland's father has spoken about his son's career and his prospects and he's spoken about his son's transfer links to Man United before. There was narratives coming out not so long ago saying that Erling Haaland was demanding £600,000 a week from his next club. Now, since his arrival at Borussia Dortmund, he has been a revelation. He's been at Dortmund over a year. He's under contract with them until 2024. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him. He does have a £68 million release clause, but it doesn't become active until next year. But the reasons I take him at Manchester United is because he would assure his goals... He's young, he's got a lot of development in him and I can assure if he comes to the Premier League he'll replicate what he's done at Borussia Dortmund and Solskjaer knows the player well. Solskjaer gave Erling Haaland his debut at just the age of 16 at Mulder and back in December 2019 Ollie and Woodward went to Norway to meet up with Haaland to negotiate a possible move to Man United. Now, let's delve into some news on Jadon Sancho. So, Borussia Dortmund still won €120 million Euros for Sancho. €120 million Euros equates to €108 million in pound sterling. Now, we actually believe there's a chance we can get Jadon Sancho for a cut price fee of £50 million. Says earlier on this season was preparing to put a fifty million pound bid in for him. Bill said earlier on this season that Dortmund reduced their asking price to eighty eight million pounds for Sancho. Jaden Sancho has visited our Carrington training ground quite a few times, so that's fueled speculation. 
Earlier on this season, it said we paused our transfer pursuit of Sancho due to the progress of Mason Greenwood. Borussia Dortmund CEO gave us a boost earlier on this season because he said Sancho, Haaland and more Dortmund stars could be sold to avoid financial crisis. And earlier on this season, Sancho made an admission saying that he has enjoyed a difficult season at Dortmund. Last summer, he was our number one priority target. But Borussia Dortmund were demanding £108 million and we was reluctant to meet that. We was only willing to pay so much up front. But it looked like he was coming last summer, didn't it? Because it said that the personal terms had been agreed, the agent fees had been agreed and we even sorted a contract and that out for Sancho. But Dortmund said to us last summer that we had until the 10th of August. To sign him, we missed out on that deadline, so Sancho remained at Dortmund. Fabrizio Romano, who is a very reliable Italian journalist and is close to Man United, he's spoken a lot about the Sancho saga. He did recently say that Man United have not yet made a decision on Sancho, and Bill's Christian Fark has spoken about it before. Analysing the vast majority of Sancho's career, he's been very, very consistent at Dortmund, that is. This is his fourth season at Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Dortmund paid just £8 million for him from Man City. He's got a contract with Dortmund until 2023. Yeah, he did enjoy a couple of years at Man City. The main explanation he left Manchester City is because he didn't get assured any first team opportunities. And before he was at Man City, he was at Watford. He was at Watford from the age of seven to the age of 14. We was willing to offer Sancho that number seven shirt. But there has been a lot of players on our agenda. I recently give you the news on Rafael Varane. Spanish newspaper ABC have said that Real Madrid have set a £51 million asking price for Rafael Varane. £51 million is very cheap for Rafael Varane. And Eduardo Inda, who's a Spanish transfer expert, he said that Rafael Varane could be on his way to Man United in the summer. Rafael Varane's contract talks with Real Madrid have stalled. He's under contract with Real Madrid until 2022. There was narratives coming out earlier on this season saying that Real Madrid were prepared to sell Rafael Varane on one condition. He must inform Real Madrid on his decision to leave. And his future is in doubt. Rafael Varane would go very well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. Rafael Varane is a world-class centre-half. He's highly experienced, he's 27 years of age. Hasn't played in the Premier League yet, but he comes to the Premier League, he will exceed expectations and he'll replicate what he's done at Real Madrid. He's been at Real Madrid for like 10 years now. He's made over 300 appearances, he's won 18 major honours. Real Madrid paid just €10 million Euros for him from Lens back in 2011. Uh, you know the news on Jules Conde from Sevilla. Uh, Sevilla have slapped a £68 million asking price on Jules Conde. Fabrizio Romano was recently talking about it and he said Sevilla's £68 million asking price is complicating a deal. But he said he's one of the most appreciated players on Man United's radar. He said a couple of weeks ago that we'd been handed a boost in our bid to sign Jules Conde because he said Sevilla had lowered their asking price to £50 million. Jules Conde's buyout clause is £68 million. He says we wasn't willing to meet that earlier on this season, but it did mention we was prepared to pay around £61 million. But his performances for Sevilla have been outstanding. He's been at Sevilla almost two years. Sevilla paid £22 million for him from Bordeaux in the summer of 2019. And he's got a contract with Sevilla until 2024. 
he'd go very well alongside Maguire in our back line. There's been a lot of narratives coming out regarding Usman Dembele recently, saying that Man United have increased their interest in Usman Dembele. We've been monitoring his displays this season. We've been talking with his representatives recently and we are preparing a bid. I think Usman Dembele is valued at around £50 million. Don't forget, was it last year, we wanted to get him on loan with the option to buy. Uh, Fabrizio Romano did say, didn't he, that Usman Dembele is set to hold talks with Barcelona over a new contract. Usman Dembele has got like 15 months left on his current contract with Barcelona. He's been at Barcelona quite a few years. Uh, Barcelona got him in a deal worth £135 million. They paid like £97 million pounds up front. He's had a lot of injuries at Barcelona as Usman Dembele. But I liked him when he was at Dortmund and I liked him when he was at Rennes. I think he's 23 years of age. But yeah, um, I'm expecting Man United to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window. I've identified the weaknesses, weaknesses in the squad. Um, I think we need a striker, we need a right winner, we need a defensive midfielder and we also need a centre-half. That's what Manchester United need. Now we will spend big in the summer transfer window according to recent reports. But Solskjaer says we'll keep transfer dealings quiet. You know... But this year's summer transfer window is the biggest in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial career. It really is. And I'm expecting him to get the backing he deserves. Because obviously Woodward has come out and said that he believes Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is the right man to lead the club forward. Uh, he released a statement earlier on this season saying that the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear. So in that aspect, Woodward is backing him. And in general, Woodward's come out several times to show his support for Ollie, even when was enduring them really bad periods. Plus, we've got John Murtough, he's our director of football and it was the right decision by the club to get a director of football in. Because I said that's one of the structural changes that we needed. And John Murtough has been at Man United since, what, 2014. He's our first ever director of football. And obviously we've got Darren Fletcher, that's our technical director. And he knows the club through thick and thin because he endured two decades as a player for Man United. Solskjaer's already discussed our transfer plans for the summer with the recruitment team. But yeah, the summer transfer window will be his fifth transfer window as permanent Manchester United manager. But I reckon Solskjaer needs around £200 million if he's to get the players he wants to recommend in. Uh, Solskjaer did warn earlier on this season that we may not do business as usual in the summer transfer window due to the pandemic but he is interested in bringing in players that will be a perfect fit for the club. Yeah, I can assure Solskjaer will, will be Man United manager in the summer transfer window. He'll be Man United manager next season. I said he does deserve another season because progress has been made.
Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will not be sat, even if Manchester United failed to win the Europa League this season. The Europa League is our only chance of winning any silverware this season. Solskjaer's got to win a trophy because he's not yet won a trophy as Manchester United manager. We haven't won a trophy since 2017, so we don't win the Europa League this season. That'll be exactly four years without a trophy, and that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. All he did say not so long ago that winning trophies can be an ego thing. He said that in regards to some other managers and some other clubs. He just basically said, you know, clubs like Man United, trophies no longer prove success. But in that aspect, I've got to totally disagree with him. I guess I can assure we're going to finish in the top four this season. But that's not good enough if we don't win the Europa League. I think there's a good chance we'll finish second this season. If we can finish second this season and win the Europa League, I'll turn around and say, yeah, that represents a good season for Man United and that gives us something to build on going on into next season. I can assure Solskjaer doesn't have a long-term future at Manchester United. He has agreed a new three-year contract worth £30 million. It's likely to be two years with an option of an extra one. Sources at Old Trafford did say a few weeks ago that talks were set to begin any day on the new deal. Because Oli is now into the final year of his current three-year contract. Paul Scholes believes that Solskjaer deserves a new contract. He's explained why, but I think there's a lot of Man United fans that disagree with us giving him a new contract. Does he deserve a new contract? In some aspects, yeah. In some aspects, no. I can assure you what's he out this new three-year contract. Because, you know, there is a lot of Manchester United fans that are Oli out. Ollie outs were trending on social media not so long ago after the 3-1 defeat to Leicester. Obviously, they've got main explanations why they want him out, but there again, there's still some Man United fans that are Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in and they believe he needs more time. You know, he's been Manchester United manager now over two years. And reflecting now on his being at the club, he's gained some managerial experience, he's tried different elements, he's learnt quite a bit on the job. Before he was with us, he was at Mulder, he won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but they're not a big club. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff, and his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. The main explanation he got sat from Cardiff is because he ended up getting them relegated. The main explanation why Solskjaer is still Manchester United manager is because he's a club legend. That's what saved him, basically. But disregarding him being a club legend, I can almost assure he wouldn't have been Man United manager now. My two biggest concerns about Oli, like I've mentioned before, is, is that he hasn't got a proven pedigree and his decision-making concerns me. Because in a lot of his games... He's managed at Man United, he's been tactically naive, especially in a lot of the big games this season. But there has been some games where he has showed tactical flexibility, but he's got to do that persistently. But, you know, Oli Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job, despite him knowing the culture of the club. And I do think that he's in a position he shouldn't be really in. Um, I do reckon that we give him the job too soon. Maybe we should have waited until the end of that particular season to decide or not whether to give him the job. But we gave him the job permanently two years ago because he did very, very well as the interim manager. He won 14 games out of 19 in all competitions. He was the interim manager for three months. You know, there's not all negativity regarding Solskjaer. You know, there's also some positives as well regarding Solskjaer. You know, he has made good signings as Man United manager. He's spent almost £300 million and so far he's enjoyed four transfer windows at the club. Obviously, hasn't got all the players that he wanted to recommend in as yet. You know, he's got rid of a lot of players since he's come in. He did well last season in his first full season at the club. You know, this season... 
in some aspects he's done well because he's got us to the he got us to the EFL Cup semi final, got us to the FA Cup quarter final, and he's got us to the Europa League quarter final. And we've got a fantastic away record in the Premier League. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. And we have enjoyed very good periods under Ole where we have seen consistency and in some of them good periods he's got the best out of the team. So they are the positives. But we've also enjoyed very bad periods under Ole where you can turn around and say, yeah, he was lucky not to be sacked. Even if we wanted to sack Solskjaer at this present time, we wouldn't be able to because no one is available at the moment as far as I'm aware. And plus, to be honest, it wouldn't really solve much if the club eventually decided to sack him anyway because not all of the blame stems from Solskjaer when we are being inconsistent. It's never all the manager's fault. But I think Oli is our best manager since Ferguson. Oli is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson retired. In the last eight years, nothing has changed at Manchester United. It's just been an ongoing cycle of inconsistency. Despite us sacking three managers, despite us spending over £1 billion, despite us overpaying four players, you know? You know, so there you go. In the summer transfer window, like I've said, uh, we are going to offload players. Um, I think there's a good chance that Edison Cavani is going to leave. A lot of United fans are saying that Martial needs to be sold because he's been out of form for the vast majority of this season. Well, Matt, a good chance we'll offload him because he doesn't get in our 11. Good chance we'll offload Donny van der Beek because he's not getting enough opportunities at Man United. Uh, Paul Pogba's looking very likely he's going to leave. Nemanja Matic, good chance we're going to offload him. Phil Jones, I'm expecting him to leave. Romero, expecting him to leave. There's a chance that we'll sell David De Gea in the summer transfer window because I reckon he's had his years at Manchester United. Will we offload Axel to Anzebe because he doesn't get in the team? Will we offload Alex Telez because he seldom plays as well? I think we'll be also looking to get rid of Diego Delo permanently. So we offload all them players in the summer transfer window. will generate a substantial amount and it will help us with our rebuilding process. But there's also a lot of players that will stay in the summer transfer window. And I think there's some players that have got long-term futures at Man United. You know, Dean Henderson, he'll stay. I think he's got a long-term future at the club. Dean Henderson is reliable enough to become our number one because he has got that experience behind him. He's done well in the games he's played in this season and he did endure two successful loans with Sheffield United. And he started our last six games in a row. But Dean Henderson has made good saves, his distribution's been good and he's made good aerial claims. Luke Shaw, he'll certainly stay. Luke Shaw's been one of our best players this season. He's shown good attacking intent. He's got into good positions. He's put good crosses into the box. He's provided width and defensively. Luke Shaw has been superb. Luke Shaw's had a good career at Man United, apart from his injuries. He's been at the club now almost seven years. Oh, it is seven years, isn't it, in fact? Harry Maguire, he can be good when he wants to be. He has enjoyed some good games this season, but he's also enjoyed poor games as well. But either way, he wasn't worth the £80 million we got him for. Harry Maguire will stay, by the way. Eric Bay. I don't think he's got a long-term future at the club, but I think he will stay potentially past the summer. My only element of concern about Eric Bay is injury prone, so in that aspect, he is a liability. Last time I read up regarding Bay, contract talks were on hold because he wants assurances over his playing time, does Eric Bay. And Wan Bissaka, I think he's got a long-term future at the club. 
you know, Wan Pasaka's enjoyed some good games this season where he's showed good attacking intent, he's got into good positions, he's put good crosses into the box and defensively he's been good, but in some games he's been poor. Where he's been caught out far too many times and he's lacked that attacking intent, but yeah, he'll stay definitely. Uh, Scott McTominway, he'll stay in the summer transfer window because he's a decent player, McTominway. He's still young, got a lot of development in him, but Tom Way's not yet on that level where we want him to be at, so hopefully he can emulate to that level. Bruno Fernandes, he'll obviously stay as well. Bruno Fernandes is our best player and he's the best signing we have made since the Ferguson era because he has made the difference in the team. In most of his games at Man United, he's been very consistent, but there's been a few games where he has looked off the pace, but Got to be honest with you, we have overplayed Bruno Fernandes. He's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Mason Greenwood, obviously, he'll stay. I think he's got a long-term future at Man United. He's been fantastic since he broke into our first-team squad. You know, Marcus Rashford, he'll obviously stay as well. Uh, Rashford's actually out with injury at the moment. I just think we need to keep Marcus Rashford on that left-hand side because that's where he's more effective. Ahmad Dilo Traore, obviously, he'll stay. He, um, he actually looks a good asset for the first-team squad. So, yeah, there's a lot of players that will stay at Manchester United. Lindelof, he's another one. I think he'll stay potentially past the summer, but I don't think he's got a long-term future at Man United. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.